What's up you guys, Chef Billy Parisi here from BillyParisi.com and I'm gonna show you one of the fundamentals of bread baking and it's how to make a sourdough starter or yeast starter recipe. That's right, I'm sitting down for this recipe video and the next four because I'm getting ready to embark on a five part video recipe series all about baking bread and the way it should be made and the way it used to be made, but we've kind of lost that art. If you've read my blog or you've heard me say maybe a few times that I originally went to culinary school to be a baking or pastry chef and looking back at that time 20 years ago, I was 18, super thin on patience, didn't want to wait for bread to rise or cakes to cool, but now that I'm 37, it's perfect timing uh, because my patients are way better these days. I mean, after all this sourdough starter or Levon takes five days to make. That's right, five days. And you're probably asking yourself, why does this take five days to make? Well, if you look back at the history of bread making, I'm talking about thousands of years ago, bread consisted of three ingredients. That's right, three, flour, water, and salt. So a sourdough starter in the culinary world is really known as a levain or a leavening agent. It's spelled L-E-V-A-I-N, so levain, if you want to sound it out exactly how it's spelled. But you may be wondering what on earth is this for? This is the natural yeast. This is what will help make your bread rise without using commercial yeast. The flavor is so much more intense. And again, I cannot stress enough, it is so important for that fermentation process to take place, which helps break down that gluten so your stomach doesn't have to break it down. You hear a lot of folks that are gluten intolerant, gluten-free, such a big popular thing these days, is because it upsets a lot of stomachs and of course in the gut. For some reason now, you go to the bread aisle in the grocery store and uh, look at all the ingredients, see if you can pronounce half of them. I bet you can. So this has been really interesting to me because I actually haven't made a starter since culinary school. It's been 20 years, so I'm really excited about this series. I'm super grateful that you're here. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of information thrown your way. And the two things or three things I would recommend getting uh, before making this so you're not super ticked off of me is a, um, a thermometer. Um, I know some of my buddies loves thermal works. Uh, if you wanna grab one of those, that'd be great. Second is a gram scale We're measuring bread. It needs to be precise. This is baking, this is science. Get a really good gram scale. They're not horribly expensive because I'm not gonna be doing too many ounce or cup conversions here. And then last but not least, a nice big tub that's got a nice tight lid that fits over top. If you've got those three things, you'll be in good shape to make this Levan and some of the other bread recipes. So let's get started in this because we got five long days to make it. And before I start, it's not hard, you just gotta wait. It's the waiting game. So the first thing we are gonna do is we are gonna measure everything out. I'm gonna be using 600 grams of whole wheat flour. And I'm gonna measure out 600 grams of water. Now we want the water temperature to be a little bit higher. And since my studio is cooler, like around 65, I'm gonna go up to in between 93 and 95 degrees. I'm doing this again because my normal standing room temperature is a little bit cooler and I need that water to be a little warmer to help activate everything. So let's go ahead and add our water. Next, we're gonna hit it with flour to that nice big tub. What you wanna do is stir it with your hands, do it until it is just combined. Don't overmix. there's no need to do any of that in this recipe. And what you wanna do is let it sit out for about two hours, let some natural yeast collect in that mixture before putting a top on it and letting it sit in a warm place. Now, I've got a secret place in my studio that's kind of up top and high next to where the vent is. You want, again, to try to get this to a warmer place, like, gosh, I don't know, anywhere above 70 degrees and no more than maybe, say, 90 degrees. Um, and let's stop right there, because let's talk about using whole wheat. So most of the flour these days you've seen, well, it's getting definitely getting better, uh, tends to be white flour, which just uses the endosperm of the kernel. So you got the endosperm, the bran, and the germ. The bran and the germ is what gives its color and a lot of nutrients and fiber. We've cut that out of the process for some reason, so we're bringing that back, and it's gonna be in all of these breads. Don't you worry, you're gonna love it. And then some people ask what kind of flour 
are using? Like what brand are you using? And I've just always used Bob's Red Mill. Even long before I ever started working with them, I always looked at my cupboards like, man, I got a lot of Bob's Red Mill products in there. I've been to their facility. I've met Bob himself. Great company, great guy. I trust him wholeheartedly. So um, I would definitely recommend using Bob's. It's just a great flower, and especially to use, obviously, in this recipe. So now, one more thing is, I didn't mention it at the beginning, but I want to throw it in there because I just think it's a great book called Flower Water Salt Yeast. Um, this dude is legit one of the best baking books I've ever seen. Honestly, uh, ever since culinary school, we have a really good bread baking book there. This is fantastic. So let's get into this next part. So after in between 20 and 24 hours of this starter resting, obviously it's going to be overnight. What we wanna do is come back. We're gonna discard about two thirds to maybe three fourths of it. At every process throughout this five day process of making this Levon, I like to smell it, I like to stretch it, I like to touch it. I just wanna know what everything smells and looks like. You'll kind of get this like leathery slash, I don't know, I don't want to say hoppy, but definitely a fermented smell to it. Um, I actually like it. <laughs> I know it may be weird to you, but maybe over time you'll like it too. So at this point, what we what we want to do is, again, discard that, go ahead and throw it away. And the reason we're doing this is because if we don't throw some of this away, and I know it's wasteful, you're going to have the biggest starter on earth. Unless you own a bakery, you're just doing this at home, trust me, it's not worth it. So. After we discard, what we're gonna do is refeed it with another 600 grams of whole wheat flour. We're gonna add in 600 grams of warm water. Again, I'm between 93 and 95 degrees here because again, my studio is a little bit cooler. Go ahead and give that a mix with the leftover Levon that was in there at the beginning or beginning to our starter. Once that's mixed, we're gonna let it sit out for about two, maybe two and a half hours this time and get some of those natural yeasts back in there. And at that point, we're gonna put a lid on it, go back to that nice warm place. We're gonna let it sit for another 20 to 24 hours. And as you can see by looking at this video, obviously the clothes are changed. Like I'm literally coming in here every day to make this with you because I haven't done it in 20 years. Again, I'm super excited to do it. So. Let's keep rolling because we're going to be on day three here in just a second. After that 20 to 24 hour process, you're going to notice that hopefully, hopefully you've done everything to the T here, that your Levon has doubled in size, okay? And you'll see it's got some nice air pockets in there. And if you take the lid off again, you're going to smell that sort of leathery, acidic, I don't know, just this, this interesting smell, this fermented smell to it. But that's gonna help, again, break down the gluten and the flour, and of course, help let it rise. We're gonna do the same process here. We're gonna take away two thirds or three fourths of it. You can just eyeball it, no big deal. We're just gonna get rid of that. And again, I like to touch and smell. I want to know ev how everything should feel and smell and look through each of these steps. Go ahead and discard all that. Just like yesterday on day two, what we're gonna do is add in 600 grams of whole wheat flour and then 600 grams of water in between 93 and 95 degrees. Give it a really nice mix and stir with your hands. Once it is combined, let it sit. Collect those nice yeasts, pop a lid on it go to that, back to that warm, dry place. And we'll see you on day four. So before I start on to day four, I wanted to chat really quick with you about this. While the container lid is off for that two to three hour period, you're con connect, uh, bringing in those natural yeast that are just in the air. This is completely normal. I know it sounds crazy, but it is normal. You could actually maybe put a piece of cheesecloth and a rubber band over the top and take it outside get some of that really wild yeast that's growing around outside. It will completely change the flavor profile of your bread. It would be absolutely amazing if you did this. It's still a little chilly here in Chicago, so I'm not gonna do that, but just wanna give you that option. All right, you guys, day four, let's keep moving on. You should see that the Levant has doubled in size again. Those great air pockets, that nice smell should still be there. 
what we want to do at this point is get rid of all but 250 grams. So I hope you've measured out your weight of your container on that gram scale before you did any of this. If not, don't worry because what you could do is just put it into another container and then put it back once you've emptied it. So we're gonna get rid of all but 250 grams left over of the Levant. And at this point, we are going to add back in 600 grams of whole wheat flour and 600 grams of warm water. Again, I'm using in between 93, 95 degree temperature water. We're gonna just mix those again with our hands just until it's combined. At this point, we can put a lid on it. No need to let it sit out for that two and a half hours. We're going back to that warm, dark place for 20 to 24 hours again. And then we're finally gonna be on day five, and this is gonna be our final day before we can start hooking up some fresh, delicious bread. All right, you guys, day five. Thanks for sticking with me. I know we got a lot going on, but we are finally here. And what we're gonna do is just like yesterday, discard all but 200 grams of the Levon this time. So get rid of all but 200 grams. And then we're gonna do a combination of white and wheat flours. What we're gonna do now is add in some white flour, followed up with some whole wheat flour, and last but not least, we're going to add in some water, but we're going to change the temperature. We're going to go down to about 90 degrees this time, maybe 88 to 90. No need to go back up that high like before. We're going to mix it in with that Levon that's already in there, that 200 grams, just until it is combined. We are going to pop a lid on it, and boom, what we'll do is make bread the next day. After that 20 to 24 hour period, we will discard some, we'll feed it, and then we'll get to bread making. So when it comes to a normal feeding schedule, what I'm gonna do is take out all but 150 grams and then replace it with the white wheat and water mixture from before. And that will sort of be my regular feeding schedule. Now, if you are not gonna make bread every single day, honestly, after this week of everyday bread baking, I probably won't need a break. But if you are gonna make it a few times a week, in between, say you make it like, Monday and then not again till Thursday, then Sunday. After you're done with Monday, pop it in the fridge overnight. It's okay, pull it back out Wednesday, the day before, start the feeding process again. You'll be in great shape that way. It will actually hold, maybe if you brush a little bit of water on the outside of it, get in a really airtight container for probably, I'd say two to three weeks, you'd be pretty good on this uh, homemade Levant. So that's the process and if you want to see an amazing bread recipe that doesn't use the levant but does use similar methods to what i'm going to be using in these next video series check out my artisan bread loaf it's super popular on youtube you will love it check it out make it we'll see you tomorrow